Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to get an order here for the uh, August 19th regular board meeting. We're meeting a week late because of summer scheduling confusions. We're usually on the second Thursday of each month. Today is the third Thursday. Welcome everybody who's here. It's great to have a large crowd. Uh, welcome anybody who happens to be uh, watching us at home uh, via, via the stream. And the first thing we'll do is uh, call this to order and call the roll. Time. Here. Karen. Here. Allison. McQueen. Here. Turner. Wait. <laughs> right, exactly. Wrong turn. We, uh, item 1.3, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes uh, of uh, last month's meeting. Do I have a motion for that? So Second. Is there any corrections that need to be made? Okay, then we'll go on that, please. Fine. Yes. Can I it? Yes. Ellison? Yes. Please. Yes. Okay. I'll acknowledge again everybody who's joined us on this uh, steamy August evening. Uh, it's lovely to have you here in the gym, even if uh, our climate control isn't absolutely terrific. Uh, and we'll move on to item two, and this is the communications and presentations part of our agenda. Uh, we have community comments, uh, item 2.2, and this is when we invite anybody who's here to uh, address the board at the microphone. Thank you very much. Um, we have two people who have signed up to do that. Uh, I'll remind everybody, again, if you're watching at home, because we are now meeting again in person, we are not doing comments via the, um, via the stream as we did during the year when we were uh, meeting remotely. So you do need to be in person for comments. And for those people who are going to address us, it's a three minute timer. That has always been our custom to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. So would like to come address the board here in uh, community comments. Thank you. So introduce yourself, tell us uh, uh, your connection to us, and, uh, and go ahead. And Steve, I'm going to ask you to be our timer, because that's, uh, that's been your role. I'll keep my, my, uh, my eye on the watch, too. So my name is Dorothy Mookie, I'm a parent, and I'm a realtor. Uh, and parents have a kid that is an assistant, and I'm a parent of a kid that is an assistant here in school, and I'm here because I know that we're meeting in person, that's our understanding. We operated remotely via um, uh, an order from the State Attorney General, which expired on July 31st. No, I'm sorry, June 30th. June 30th. Uh, and to this point, the Attorney General has not issued any further instruction. Okay. So as a parent of two kids, I'm not vaccinated. It's a risk for me to come here. I know that I am, but I can pass it on to my kids. And I would like you to consider taking comments virtually until everybody can feel safe coming inside. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mr. Turner. Hey, Turner, I realized I forgot my mask. I'm sorry. You can shoot me later after I talk. We will. I'm concerned about the infiltration of the dogma in curriculum, particularly in STEM. I'm an engineer, and I've been tutoring students in mathematics for years. I'm not stupid or naive or a red Trump supporter, but I found in long-time research of these things that aspects of the facile wings of some currently popular movements have created a kind of religious dogma. It's gained significant momentum and infiltrated some schools. Theory gives political scholarship efforts undeserved scientific patina sometimes, and they should be taken un they should be taken in question as true. We should be careful to keep politicization out of modifying curriculum. Educators, I believe, should be neutral as to whether students become activists. And I have come across a number of examples from other schools that are disturbing to me and extreme, but that's how I'm making the point sometimes. An Oregon school's curriculum instructs third graders to do the inner work, to acknowledge how you participate in oppressive systems. In another school, boards were required to apologize for, quote, rapes committed by their gender, close quote. An education professor claims that mathematics operates as whiteness. 
and then there's the one that covers everything, intersectionality one. 2 plus 2 might sometimes equal 4. We have to understand that accepting this contributes to a system that oppresses a whole list of people. Except people out in the West are concept, the context. And then the science department program is working on decolonizing flight. And my favorite among them is the one that says, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is a hegemonic discourse, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Anytime someone uses hegemonic in a statement, they're off the deep end of the deep end. And it's here already, to a certain extent. Two years ago, a teacher was stopped from having students debate mascots, and instead of learning about a subject, they were told what to think about it. I think we need to be especially careful to keep out poorly designed and implemented curriculum and training. Good stuff, of course, but if for no other reason, it makes the legislators points for them if we do that kind of thing. So teach people how to think and promote diversity of thought. If we're going to embrace fearless thinking, we should do it with the slogan. I know you're up, a lot of, up against a lot of great dogmatic pressures, but try to resist. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Those are the only two names I have for community comments. And so, unless there's somebody else, we'll move on to our administrative reports. That's item 2.3 in the agenda. Are you rock, paper, scissoring it tonight, or? I'm going first. Okay. <laughs> that was courage there. All right. Um, so, uh, here, we, we spent much of the summer gearing up for the, the new year, um, which really kicks off on Monday when our students return. So we're, we're excited about that. We've had a great week of professional development, and we've welcomed a lot of new staff members. Uh, to our team, and, and um, that's been great. Our students, uh, we had our first annual alumni day this past weekend, this past Saturday. Um, we had the volleyball alumni come back and play against our student athletes, and then we had a um, girls soccer game and then a boys soccer game, and, and it was just a great vibe. Um, the, the whole feel of the evening, um, it's always nice when the alumni come back, and, and for our kids, uh, for many of our students, those are people who they grew up watching. They were the, the idols that um, they wanted to be just like. So to be on the same court or same field with those um, alumni was, was really powerful. Um, and, and you can see there the pictures. It's, it's also a testament to um, the community that we have here that our alumni want to come back and that the alumni want to help in the, with that final tune-up before the season kicks off. So um, that was great. That, that event was uh, coordinated by Jeff Eyrick and, and a nice tune up for all of our student athletes. The seasons actually start this upcoming week for, for each of our teams. So looking forward to a great fall season. Um, this year we did our orientation a little uh, different than we've done in the past. So in the past we've done an open house where everybody, all of our students are able to um, join and their families are able to join. And we, in looking at kind of our overall goals, um, what we want to accomplish with an open house, we had a lot of students and families who were already comfortable with the building and comfortable with the, their classes and the schedule, and we didn't feel like it was really necessary to bring everybody back, but we wanted our new seventh graders to have that experience. Um, their, their visit when they were in sixth grade was canceled due to social distancing and, and everything. So last Friday, we had a team of about eight teachers who volunteered their time and came in. And we brought our, our new seventh grade students in for three hours. Um, they were able to get their lockers set up, get all their supplies dropped off, and then they went through a cycle of three different team building activities. So one was, was intentionally focused around social and emotional learning and connection. Um, one was a wiffle ball game outside. And then the third was just a really a team building game where the students were using piece, parts of a hot wheel track and then to get the hot wheel, each person was holding an individual piece. So there was a lot of laughter, a lot of smiles, and then um, we ended with a, a building scavenger hunt. So I think there were like 20 different things they had to find in our building. So the seventh grade students were, were able to move throughout our building without, without having to worry about Time without having to worry about eighth graders, without having to worry about high school students, without having to worry about um, any of those different things. If they had all the right supplies, they could just 
get to, to experience the building, learn the, the floor plan, um, and, and it, was a, it was a great day. So, so we're really excited um, for them to be joining us this year, along with all of our other students. Excellent. I'm glad we got yeah. Cover that because it's, it's really important. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep, indeed. Um, yeah, and those will be outside and doing those things. Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. From Mills Lawn. Okay, so from Mills Lawn, um, we are going to kind of start at the bottom. Jack. Sure. So, um, as, as many of you know, Mills Lawn has a lot of new staff members. Um, I, myself included. So I did spend the summer, I was able to meet with about 85% of the staff individually over the summer at various locations, um, some near their homes, some here at Mills Lawn, and some in, in Yellow Springs at different um, establishments. So I really tried to spend the summer hearing their stories and getting to know the new staff members along with some of the veteran staff members here at Mills Lawn. So I do have um, six of my eight um, new teachers here. And is this the appropriate time to introduce you? We're going to do it in just We're a moment. Yes, okay, okay, so I do have six of the eight. But I really did enjoy um, the opportunity to get to know them. Some of those settings were in our PDL training where you can see the pictures on, on the board. So they kind of went through that PDL. Um, 101 as training, and I was in that training as well as summer. And you can go back up. So the high school decided to do seventh grade, and as an elementary school, we decided that we we needed all the parents and all the families and all the students to have an opportunity to come to Mills Lawn. Um, they're younger, and we think it's important for them to see a face for their teacher, especially since Mills Lawn has eight new teachers and a new principal. So we wanted to do something, but we knew that having a traditional open house was not um, going to happen. So what we decided to do was a meet the teacher night in lieu of an, a traditional open house. And I apologize for anybody that could not park out front because it was right before <laughs> this meeting. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun to be able to walk around and see the smiles and the eyes smiling. You can't see their actual smiles. Um, but the teachers were excited, the parents were excited, families were excited, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I met a lot of um, families today, and most of all, the students looked happy to be back on the campus. And it was real fun to watch some of the parents um, pick up their students so that they could look into the classroom since the teachers were in the windows. So um, teachers were able to pass out literature and at least give the students an opportunity to see a face before they walk in to the building on Monday. We may do. Uh, thank you so much for that. We'll move to 2.4, which is We've moved this up in our agenda over the last couple of months, our honors, recognitions, gifts, and introductions. I'm going to turn this over to the superintendent. Yes, so thank you. Um, I want to start with the teachers first. And, and Megan, I'm going to go back to you. Um, I think you have eight of eight here this evening with you. Oh, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here. Why don't you go thank ahead you. and um, go ahead and introduce them. And then teachers, if you want to say anything, um, please, please feel free. And, and these folks you've already worked with. Yes, we have. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have Terry Harrington. She is one of our new intervention specialists. Ashley Mishler, a new intervention specialist. <laughs> Katie Miller, a new intervention um, specialist. Then we have Ashley Volker. She is one of our new teachers, fifth grade. We have Alexis Hobbs, new teacher, fourth grade. Lexi Goodrich, new teacher, fourth grade. And then on the other side, I, I apologize to you both. Uh, we have Julia Anspaugh, new teacher, sixth grade. And Kenetta Sanford, new teacher, sixth grade. Do, they, do the sixth grade teachers have to sit over there? Or <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all being here. 
Yes, wonderful that you turned out. Anybody want to say anything? You're not up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. I'm, I'm really happy. Every day has been wonderful. Um, I'm also a parent of kids that come here, and I oh, live in the nice. village. So it's been, very, it's been very welcoming. The staff is awesome. It's a very positive place to be. So every day has been a joy. There's a lot of experience sitting here with, with these, these uh, teachers, Catherine. Yeah, I just wanted to echo what she said. Um, it's been such a, just such a wonderful week doing our PDs together, and um, our leaders planned such fun activities for us. We went to Camp Kern together and got to be outdoors and breathe fresh air and, and meet each other and just do authentic learning that we want to do for our students as well. It was just so wonderful to engage like that and just build that camaraderie and do something fun and after such a trying time for everybody, um, I just feel like that, that really started us off well and positive and everybody has been so welcoming at the school and the community and so helpful. I've never been at a place where people are constantly coming up and introducing themselves and asking if they can help me. And, it's just been so wonderful. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and all of our students, um, we were talking, I was with the sixth grade team tonight, and sometimes on a back to school night, sometimes the kids are like, ah, summer's over, but every single child was so looking forward to being here, and you can just see it in their faces. So it was just, it's just wonderful. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Rex, I've got uh, Rich Gillette. Rich is uh, the new health and PE teacher for grades 7 and 12. And then I have Sam Jacobs. Sam Jacobs is our new instructional assistant. Um, he's going to be actually covering grades 7 and 12 as well. So I'm welcome to both of you. And I'm going to add about Rich. He's from um, Lincoln Park, so he kept saying it at Camp Kern. This is so different. I know it's this. <laughs> yes, it's so different. I was like, well, welcome. Welcome to Ohio. <laughs> a lot less desert. So, yes. <laughs> well, it's a I just wanted to say I'm really excited to be here. And I'm an alumni of Mill Pond, the McKinney School, and the Ivy School. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Welcome back. Oh, I'm back. I back. Yeah. Um, I'm going to echo to the same thing. I, I just, I'm so happy to be here, and we, we just had an incredible week, and it's been so nice meeting all these amazing people with um, just such incredible years of experience, um, just a wealth of knowledge, and, and everyone's so welcoming and loving, and I am so excited to, to be here and to, to be part of the Yellow Springs family. Um, it's just everyone's just been so, so kind. And I know I have huge shoes to fill because I, I, I know Kate and um, I just adore her and I'm going to try to bring um, that's that same level also that she, that she has brought to me. So, very excited to be here. Great to have you. Okay. Uh, Tammy has a new yes, member she, she wants to introduce. Uh, yes, I have uh, Sarah Meadows here. She is going to be um, my new assistant, um, and she is going to be uh, taking care of the payroll. Um, I first hired Sarah when I was a payroll. Um, but back in 2008, it's been a while. 2008, and then um, I hired her at a charter school. Again, for me to, to work and do awesome. payroll and accounts payable. Um, so it was uh, pretty much a, um, a no-brainer when she applied for this position, and I'm just looking forward to working with her again and getting a lot of things done. So. There will be a lot of uh, getting to know you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. Good. Yeah, and you know, so she knows what it's like to work with me, and she applied again. So I don't complain. Leslie Garrett. 
She will start tomorrow. Wow. Leslie <laughs> um, comes to us from the city of Dayton Human Relations uh, Council. So she brings a lot of experience um, and passion and energy. And I think she's going to be so good for us. <laughs>
these folks are committed um, and excited. Um, so that's a that's a really good a really good feeling. Um, it was pretty impressive having them all here. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, I do want to go over a few academic updates that we that we have for this coming year. So, first, we have a, a platform called Branching Minds, and, and that will help us um, support students academically and then on the behavior at scale side. Um, so, we spent um, the, the admin team has spent a couple of days this summer already, kind of getting trained on that, and the teachers have had. Um, the teams at each building have had training, and then the teachers are um, had training this week. So we will continue that um, all year. The next thing, in the past, we've administered the STAR assessment for um, reading and math. And, and so we are transitioning to a different assessment, the NWEA's Measures of Academic Progress, or MAP. So we will give that in reading, language, and math at grades K through 10. And then in grades five and eight, science, and, and the reason for that is there is a state science test in grades five to eight. So it really just gives us a kind of a benchmark of where students um, are performing, and uh, we can get a lot of detailed reports from them. And uh, aligned to OI's standards. Um, Mills Lawn teachers are participating this year in um, partnership with New York University's uh, PINE program, um, which is the Program for Inclusion and Neurodiversity Education. And so that is a professional development platform for not only for intervention specialists, but for every teacher to really understand neurodiversity issues and how we can better support students. So Megan's leading her team. Megan and Judy Chicker are leading uh, the team through that. So that's pretty exciting. Um, for us. Each um, building has an equity leadership team um, through Montgomery County ESC has a program that they're offering districts, a year-long program for teams to really dig into equity issues um, in education. So each building has nine participants and so Donna first and I are on um, the team we split the buildings and so uh, that first meeting I think is next week. Um, so we're excited about what that can do for us and how that can help support our, our strategic plan goals. <coughs> and then um, we've increased our technology coaching um, hours and then this is through um, some of our ESSER funds. Um, we've increased those. Um, Matt Gerberg was our tech coach last year and he just does an amazing job. Um, really supporting teachers in the classroom, so we are continuing that. And this year we also have, through Montgomery County ESC, um, an embedded instructional coach who will um, serve the uh, middle school, high school one day a week, total of 35 days of the year. And then at grades 5 through, five through 12, probably focusing on 5 through 10, um, we will have a math coach. Um, so that is really exciting. Again, embedded in the classroom, we we'll work with the teachers on, on data. Um, but those are some, uh, some new uh, changes for us. Can I just ask a question mm -hmm. about the equity leadership team? Um, so, how, what, so there are these teams that will meet monthly, but how, how does that then ripple out into the rest of the staff? So, Make sure. 
sure that this year is, is pretty fantastic and safe for our children. You know, we spent three years virtually, I mean three years, it felt like three years, <laughs> virtually last year. That was hard. And, and I said it last year and I'll say it now, we were um, one of the only schools to do that. We came back for a quarter and we were very successful. So what's happened in the interim? A lot of negative, negative things have happened, but some really positive and that is the vaccinations. You know, we are almost 100% vaccinated as adults in the school community. Our students who are eligible, you know, it's harder to get those numbers, but I think we're close to 75%. My plea to parents and families is get your child vaccinated if your child is eligible. We are having a clinic tomorrow at Yellow Springs High School for one to three. If, even if you've not signed up now, come get your shot. Get your first shot if you still need it, get your second shot. Please get vaccinated. You know, right now, um, I cannot require the vaccine. And that has to do with things way beyond me and FDA approval. Um, but we believe in science here and, and we believe in the power of vaccines. And We've all been to school, and we've all had vaccines for lots of things. So, but that's what's changed, right? The vaccine. The, uh, the Fire Department of Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have put out a new guidance. Um, what they recommend is follow every level of mitigation. We are following every level of mitigation. Vaccination. Not only vaccinations, but assisting public health with vaccination plans. This will be our third. We will continue to do so. You know, I, I don't know how accurate it is, but the fact that the vaccine for our younger children is coming in October, uh, that's what I'm hearing. When it comes, we will be ready. We will absolutely host a clinic for our younger children. When the booster shots become available, we will do that. So we are doing that. We have a universal masking policy that we started actually the week before, not this, this week, but last week. Universal masking inside and actually some masking outside depending upon what we're doing. We did a good job cleaning last year. We are continuing that. We have um, water bottle fillers as we did last year. Um, we have hand sanitizer, all of that. Um, the guidance has changed in terms of social distancing um, to, I'm going to say three feet, and, and that number becomes important when you have to do the whole quarantine piece. We are doing all of that. What we need parents and families and students to do, and staff, when you're at home in the morning, do a health check. Do I feel okay? You know, do I have a fever? We know that this fact, this uh, virus takes lots of forms. If you don't feel well, it's easy to get a test. We have tests here. <laughs> so I don't know that, or that there is anything else that we can do that we are possibly you know, that we aren't doing already right now. I've had a few questions, not many, but a few about why we are not um, doing virtual instruction. So by law, I cannot do virtual instruction like we did last year, with one exception. And that is, if we create another school with a different IRM, with individual staff assigned to that school, students only assigned to that school, and a program, a software program, that um, not only provides instruction, but does all kinds of other things. First of all, that's prohibitively expensive. I don't know of any other school, perhaps but Hilliard, who is doing it, and they are only doing it because they did it last year. 
And um, we believe our children need to be with us. There's a real benefit in personal interaction. You know, you heard the teachers talk about being excited. They are excited. And quite honestly, our children are excited. They want to come back to school. We've been put in a difficult place. Um, we've been asked to be many things that we are not. But that's our lot, and, and, and we're just going to move forward. We are educators. We are going to educate our children in the safest way possible. So this plan um, really details all of that. So there's, and it's just divided into sections. So there's the vaccination piece. The next piece is masking. Um, the next piece is monitor daily health. And then we go into ventilation. We still have our air filters in every space. Um, we have more than enough change out filters, uh, cleaning and sanitation, physical distancing. For music and extracurriculars, I will say we spent some considerable money last year buying special masks for um, our musicians in terms of athletics. Um, I had a lengthy discussion with Jeff Eirich, and I said, you know, I'm sure you watched the Olympics. We're going to behave like the Olympians behave, right? They uh, participated in their event, and they came off and were around people that generally had a mask today. Fortunately, the only thing right now we have in doors is volleyball. Um, but he has addressed that with all of his coaches. So I think that, you know, again, we are doing everything we possibly can. I want to point out at the end of this um, plan, these are the new modified quarantine policies. And let me tell you how, how this works. Let's say there's an exposure. If students are exposed or adults are exposed, we have to go through a series of questions. And the next page is the flow chart. So, are you vaccinated or are you wearing a mask? If the answer to those two is yes, then you can remain. And as always, whether you're exposed or not, always monitor your health symptoms. So, that, that's a big change from last year. Now, we didn't have the quarantines, um, quite honestly, or the positive cases like other districts. Because we took it seriously, we masked. This community is a highly vaccinated community. All of those things remain the same. And we now have a good portion of us vaccinated. Um, so that's, that's the plan. I do want um, Ms. Winston and Mr. Haddock to talk a bit about some specifics for their building because people have asked, you know, we, the children have to eat. Um, we no longer have the tents because quite honestly, um, they were so prohibitively expensive. Um, and, you know, we, we have to figure out how, how we're going to make this work. We just have to figure out how. Well, we'll only a few months. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to have them speak here a few things. Sure. Um, in our building, I think the, we're going to follow a bunch of what we did last year. It's going to look very similar. Um, logistically, at drop off, that's going to be, I think, the first question people have. We're going to continue allowing uh, traffic in both of the front entrances. And we're going to use three doors for students to enter. So in the past, we've only ever used one door. So we're going to continue to use three doors just because it's an opportunity to avoid crowding at all. Um, and then lunch, we are going to continue to use three lunch spaces. So, so that, for us, that's the, the big thing. Our, our students will be able to spread out. So we'll be able to use the cafeteria, the kiva. Um, we count that as one space. And then the courtyard. And then also the front yard. Um, our students will be able to eat in all those spaces. I think uh, we're going to continue to monitor, you know, obviously as the weather changes, if we need to, if it gets too cold to be outside, we can open up the front hallway, we can open up the 8th grade hallway, 
So, so that's going to be kind of the evolution of this once the weather changes. Um, but it's something we're certainly monitoring, and, and our classrooms, we our, our two points of emphasis really are the masking, ensuring that our students are wearing masks, wearing them properly, um, and then that our classrooms are set up so students are three feet apart. So um, that that will help us tremendously as far as avoiding major disruption with from quarantine or large groups of students having to be quarantined. Um, so just being intentional about logistics and then focusing on those two pieces. At Mills Lawn, we will continue what they did um, in April and May of last school year. We're going to use separate entrances and exits. We are going to be using the kindergarten um, door. We're going to be using the main door. We're going to be using this door for entrance and exit. And we're going to be using the door on the end for our fifth and sixth grade students. Um, teachers, um, we discussed this today. We're still going to be doing the hand sanitizing. Um, we are going to monitor the restrooms and make sure that we are limiting the number of students that are in there at one time. Um, we are going to use the bulldog paw prints that are on the floor to make sure that when the students are standing in the hallway, they do have that distance. And there are also arrows making sure that they know what side of the hallway that they should be walking um, on. I think the big question for Mills Lawn is the lunch time and I will say one of the big changes from last year is the fact that we were able to change the schedule so that we can utilize the entire gym versus just half of the gym at lunchtime. We will not have more than two grade levels in lunch. Um, we do have an outdoor option, um, but I was talking to a parent earlier and I was saying, you know, it's Ohio. So we don't know if there's going to be storms, you know, during lunchtime. So we do need to make sure that kids know that, you know, where their seat will be located here in the gym. Um, we even discussed maybe opening the, um, the stage. And so we are really going to spread the students out. We do have more cafeteria tables coming so that kids can sit at a table this year. Um, but so I think that's the major change here is that we are going from half of the gymnasium to the full gymnasium, possibly the stage, and we do have an outdoor option when it's available. But, you know, it's going to get cold. We are going to have storms in Ohio, and we are going to have snow. So we have to be prepared um, for those circumstances, and that is what we are really working on um, right now. Students will have an assigned seat at lunch, so we know who is sitting beside who at all times. And I feel like I've been able to create a schedule where we have um, enough supervision at these times, whether it's at lunch or recess, so that we can make sure that the kids are in their seats, in their assigned seats, and make sure that when students are finished eating, they pull that mask back up, because that's important too. You know, we, we talked at, um, at Camp Kern. We, we have to think differently, right? So a teacher said, I just want to get back to normal where I can do my small groups and that. And I'm like, we well, can't. We just have to say, okay, if we have to limit time and we have to limit the number of kids and we have to have more space, how might we do that? And so this is, and, and, and I, they get it. And, and they are really, I can't emphasize that enough. They are really working hard to make this work. And, and it will work. I mean, I, I, I'm confident it will work. Can I say that we're going to be, you know, perfect? No, I can't. Um, but our primary goal is to be safe. Well, thank you, uh, all three of you, uh, for that presentation. And, uh, you know, I guess I would just remind everybody that over the last, what has it been, 18 months at this point, um, we've had to do a lot of this as information changes, as recommendations changes, as, as uh, infection data changes. It's perfectly conceivable we'll have to redo this again uh, in one direction or the other. Uh, so I appreciate all of the work that you've had to do multiple times uh, in order to make sure that the students are safe. I am uh, 
also complementary, uh, I'm very heartened uh, by the fourth quarter of last year when there were far fewer people vaccinated than there are now. Uh, we did very well uh, in the fourth quarter, and I think as Jack uh, reported, uh, students just so desperate to be back together that even that was a, was a bonus above and beyond what went on in the classrooms. Um, I'm also really heartened, not altogether surprised, that we have an almost 100% vaccination rate among faculty and staff. That is not true in other districts. Yes. Uh, Some is less than 50. There you go. 40 is the average in a lot of um, counties. Right. Uh, so uh, I, you know, so I applaud uh, the, the staff and faculty. Though, as I said, I'm not altogether surprised at this, but I think that is reassuring as well. Uh, for for everybody in terms of our safety. So I really do appreciate this plan. I'm uh, confident that we can we can get this year off to as good a start as possible under the circumstances and it's uh, and so thank you. Does our public health expert need to say anything? Mm -hmm. I was gonna say something later, but I just you know I I I I feel like you're focusing on all the things that Yeah, I think it's great that you're partnering, you're partnering with our excellent local public health department to host the vaccination clinics. But if anyone misses any of those dates, it is not a problem nowadays to find a vaccine like it was several months ago. I mean, like trip over opportunities practically to get a vaccine. So if you've been putting it off, it's really not hard to do. And it's what really you need to do if you want to be kind of part of the solution for all of us and yourself. Um, along with masking when you're indoors with people now. Um, if you ever stop, start again. Um, yeah. Any other questions or comments about this? Or back to the plan? Okay. Was that the last item on your separate agenda? Okay, so then we'll move to item six, and that's our consent calendar, the administration administrative portion. And that is a long one at 6.1 to 6.14. 14. Uh, 14, is that correct? Yes. 6.1 to 6.14. A motion, please. Second. Okay. So a lot of this is our back to school so, stuff right, we need to so do. So we discussed the, um, the safety plan. I do want to talk about 6.2. For sidewalks as part of our safe routes to school um, plan with the village, and so that will um, thankfully allow our no lawn children <laughs> to walk um, on this side of the property on a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, At long last. So, uh, so that would be, that would be very good. Um, the rest is, is pretty um, sure. boilerplate. Um, some new job descriptions because of some transitions that we've had. Um, and that's really it. I'm happy to answer questions about any of the buttons. Well, think, thinking about a lot of work, just doing one of those new job descriptions and really putting your heads together in terms of what you need and how things need to shift. So, so yeah. I really appreciate it. Have a nice day. Well done. Working hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So much for summer vacation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was that was your cue. That was your cue. Other questions about these items? Call about that, please. Allison? Yes. The Queen? Yes. On? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then the personnel portion of our consent calendar. This is item seven in the agenda, and there's only one here. This is 7.1 motion. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay. Excellent. So we'll go now to our board communication section. Uh, and uh, Steve, what can you tell us about the career center? Uh, well, they're not going to be as uh, the same with mass. It's um, optional mass.
Yeah, it's a lot to digest. Yeah. Other board member items? I want to say something. Uh, and and it, just because of the timing, we're not able to do this quite as personally as I'd like, but uh, I want to say thank you to Kara and Stephanie who have worked with us in particular uh, worked quite a lot uh, over the years and did wonderful work, each of them having, frankly, you know, just terrific opportunities come along for them. And, you know, we wish them the very best. Uh, that's, that's one of the things this district does, is, is to hire excellent people who, I'm afraid, then get poached <laughs> by, by other places. Uh, and so Stephanie and Kara, uh, good luck to you both, and thank you for all of your service to the district, uh, which was stalwart and, uh, and always done with a smile. Now you know why Tammy and I have been. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, they will. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to reiterate a little bit. Um, so, you know, please get vaccinated. Um, get your kids vaccinated as soon as they're eligible. It's very easy to access vaccines. Um, they are not experimental. They will not rush in development. Um, this vaccine was um, being worked on and in development from the first time. There was SARS, which is years and years ago, so um, I don't really like being in the debunking business when I'm hired as a public health person of hearing stuff that's completely untrue. Um, um, please utilize masks um, and testing. So um, nationally, really few public library systems, including our own excellent local public library, you can get free um, home testing kits. Um, where you download an app and then get on your computer and um, wait for the availability of a live person who's going to confirm that it was really you who swabbed your nose so that when they provide you with the result that you can show someone who needs to see it, it's legitimately your own personal test. Um, when you do finally get the person on the screen and you do the test, you have the results in 15 minutes, um, very widely available, um, and that's all part of part of what helps us keep track of what's going on. Um, since I'm saying this in the, our public school setting, and I know that there's lots of concern, I want to say um, I'm not um, putting any of this advice out there without my own true internal feelings of concern. I still have a uh, school child who is attending a facility in the area that is not requiring masking. Um, he needs to be there. He is wearing his mask, um, and he is vaccinated. And you know, we need to see what happens in terms of the decision about boosters. Um, but these are the things we can do to protect ourselves, our families, our colleagues, our community, humanity, etc. Thank you for that. Okay. The board is going to go into an executive session. We will not be returning to vote on any other business. So this concludes the public portion of our meeting for tonight. Thank you all. Thank you all at home if you're watching. Uh, and, and have a safe evening. Do I have a motion to go into the executive session, please? Second. Call the roll. Thank you. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. And Ward, I think we're going to go we'll to the conference.